Um, so with that, so now it's time for us to go to the sort of um, main pro main item for today's event because we still have some awards Nyana, for students there. Um, I would like us to give this opportunity to our keynote speaker um, who I always manage to always bump into <laughs> using, during events, um, Dr. Noratlag, the Director of Entrepreneurship Development in Higher Education and um, Training. Um, Dr. Nora, over to you. Thank you so much, Jimmy, and uh, and you, L colleagues. It's, I miss that I that I'm not there with you. I think I, I feel like my German colleagues. You know, we look forward to this event every year, and then I wait for that for that ceremony in the hall, and then we go to the staff room, and then there's a special spread with a lovely lunch. And I always wait for that spinach, very nice spinach and very nice pumpkin. Yeah, so usually pumpkin, all but the spinach. So I'm missing it this year. Where is the lunch? Where is the visit to Turfluop? I am so missing that and missing all of you. But I'm so glad we can at least speak and see each other here. Uh, and uh, colleagues, uh, I, I would like to now, you know, use the opportunity that that our uh, that our technology give us, and maybe just make our my conversation a little bit more visible and a little bit more visual. And I'm going to to try and keep it fairly short because I know some of you are waiting there, thinking, "Oh, now we have to listen to this woman," and we want to get our prizes. Yes, I know. But I have a very special message for you, and I hope that you will permit me to share that message. So uh, just sharing uh, this, the screen here with you. Uh, if it should be showing, if it doesn't show it, please let me know. And uh, th the topic that my good colleague Jimmy um, wanted me to speak about was the importance of student entrepreneurship and the role played by EDH, EDI, as we call ourselves. And uh, colleagues, I know, and student colleagues, I know that many of you are familiar with EDHE, so I'm not going to do long new introductions of things that you already know. I'm going to do a, a quick talk in two parts. And the first part uh, is focused on entrepreneurship and a wonderful, wonderful example that I want to share with you of something absolutely beautiful from Limpopo. And the second part is wonderful new things that are going to be happening in EDHE in EDI in this year, by the grace of God, that I would love for you all to, uh, to participate in. So I just firstly want to recognize all our VIPs, ah, our University of Limpopo colleagues, hey, yes, uh, there you are. Um, and uh, I, I just listed your names and uh, I, I recognize you and I thank you all for, for having myself and my team, you will see that some of them are also participating. And this is the beauty that of a virtual engagement. Normally we can't all travel from uh, Pretoria and, and lose too much time for working. Now they can, they can participate and also see and join in what you are doing through the STEP program and through our colleagues that whom we love dearly at University of Lim Limpopo. But I especially greet the guests of honor, the STEP students, but also those staff members who had helped the STEP students to reach their objectives. I want to congratulate uh, on leading the way, the University of Limpopo, along with their partners through STEP in providing entrepreneurial training for students, thus developing their skills and their knowledge and their confidence to pursue an entrepreneurial career. I like the word entrepreneurial career as, as you use it because students, we no longer, as you go away from, from STEP now and as you leave STEP, some of you will continue with the businesses you started, others might choose to do something else. But the beauty of the entrepreneurial focus that we now have is while you're studying, you have that opportunity to have that side hustle. 
you have that opportunity to now perhaps look at an e-commerce type of business as well, something that you might not have had so much opportunity in the past. So I like the fact that you don't necessarily have to have a startup right now. Uh, although I know that in STEP, you did great things focused on, on your startups. Also, University of Limpopo, congratulations on your hub. Uh, you planned it and you were talking about it and thinking about it and wow, it's a reality. It happened and there you are. And uh, colleagues, well done and all the very best to you. For, on behalf of Universities SA, Yusuf, and the Department of Higher Education and Training, we are so proud of you and happy with you for this. And we are at your service should you need us in any way. And then, of course, our favorite, our first young lady to win a category in the entrepreneurship inter intervarsity. Last year was only the second year that we held the, the uh, uh, any entrepreneurship intervarsity, the national intervarsity for all the 26 universities. And it's the first time that we have a young woman winning a category and Khudis Olivia, we celebrate with you and we congratulate with you and the university, your big win. And STEP and colleagues from Germany and STEP related colleagues, we recognize your role in supporting Khudis as well in her business. Uh, so big, oh, and really lots of good news. Hey, let's not talk bad about 2020. So there was a lot of good, there were a lot of good things that came from 2020 and uh, I celebrate that with you. I want to show you something beautiful now. I want to show you this absolutely magnificent piece of art that I'm sure you didn't see this coming. You were thinking we're talking about entrepreneurship. This is a portrait and I would love to actually know how many of you are familiar with this artist, Nelson Makama. He is like, wow, one of the most amazing export products, not of South Africa only, but of Limpopo. His portrait titled Vision of a Limited Limitless Future actually appeared on the cover of that big international time magazine. And the, the uh, issue was called Art of Optimism. Vision of a limitless future. And I want to say to you in a time where we feel very limited, I want to show you a little bit and a few glimpses from the work of Nelson Makamu to just help you think about the what ifs of a limitless future. This man made me think of the importance of student entrepreneurship in Limpopo in 2021. He is a child of your province. He is he was not a student at the University of Limpopo. As a matter of fact, he got an opportunity to study at a, a different, much smaller institution. You can go read up about his biography. But based on his work and his life and the, the amazing art that he creates, I want to share two thoughts with you. He's from Modimole, by the way. And I want to share two thoughts with you. Maybe you know him very well. He's, he's not that, I wasn't that familiar with him. And I just wanted to just, wow, stop and celebrate him as an example of you as students who are there. I know the Nelson Makamus are sitting in this conversation. You are a Nelson Makamu in a whole different discipline. You have a different thing that is your export product, that is your claim to fame. And maybe you don't become world famous. You, maybe you're not going to be visited by Oprah Winfrey. I heard an interview where she complained she had to climb four sets of stairs to visit him in his studio in Johannesburg because he's a humble man. He is not, he's just 
he doesn't think he's important just because he's famous and because his art is, is so sought after. Oprah had to climb four sets of stairs and she complained a lot, but she bought from him. She's his customer. Trevor Noah interviewed him and he's a child of the soil of Limpopo. I'm so proud of him. And he made me think. When I, when I listened to his story and I listened what, to why he started doing art, it was wonderful to hear that in the absence of toys, his art was developed by the fact that he created his own toys from clay. You guys would be familiar with that. Who would think that that would be the, the roots of, of a, a world famous artist? In times of uncertainty, we need to become resilient. And here I want to use a word that is close to my own heart, the word resilience. And I'm so glad my colleague mentioned the word resilience just before me. In times of uncertainty, we need to become both emotionally and economically resilient. Think of it as strong. Think of it as the ability to bounce back after difficult things happen. And uh, in that sense, I want to share three characteristics of resilient people with you. And I want to challenge you as much as I challenge myself with my own difficulties and my own reality, that the first thing is people who are resilient accept the harsh realities that face them. They find meaning in difficult times. They find some meaning. It's, it, it happens. These things, bad things happen, but somehow they, they manage to find some meaning in it. And thirdly, they have the ability to improvise. As Linda Lindani uh, uh, would, would say to me, we, would, we, we often spoke about that in the past. Use what you have. Take a look around. Make do with whatever you have at hand. If you have clay at hand and no toys, can you make toys from the clay? What can you use to improvise? So resilience if you want a formal definition, this was the, also resilience in the face of trauma was the topic of my own PhD thesis uh, 11 years ago. And my definition for resilience was that resilience is the ability to endure, you gotta stick it out, which is so difficult, recover after whichever traumatic experience or hardship you had gone through, but then there comes the big thing, grow through hardship, through trauma, through difficulty. And that is also what we want to see in our businesses. And the beauty is, in the spirit of resilience, we can celebrate one good thing that we have. If we have to use what we have at the moment, we have a university. And at the university, we have internet access. Wow, a massive big thing. That's once we can all be back on campus. I know, I know, we will get there. Once we are back at campus and once we have unlimited, uh, reliable internet access. Did you think about the fact that your market has no borders? In the same way that Nelson's artwork became global. He is known internationally. He has had exhibitions internationally. He's everywhere. So many people know him. So many people internationally buy from him because his shop, his, shop, his studio does not have borders. Your business does not have borders. And you need to become an expert on cashing in, on building your business right there from Limpopo, where you are. No special place required from there. And with this bit, I want to stop my chat about, about Nelson and resilience. And I want to take you over to the next phase, which is really 
the opportunities for students with Eddie in 2021. Uh, program director, do I have another five minutes? Um, yes, you do. And program director, can you see my screen? So, the uh, new presentation? Um, no, I can only see you currently. Oh. Oh, you don't want to only see me, I promise you. You want to see the screen. So let me share the screen here. There we go, there we go. So let's see, I changed to a different presentation that I think, I think these are things that you want to, that you want to know of. And by the way, I, I'm, I'm not reading my comments in the chat now, but you are most welcome at any stage. Write any questions, write any comments in the chat. Uh, my team, uh, team, I didn't ask you before, but I'm sure you will help to reply and respond to any questions or comments uh, that you might have. Uh, and, and that goes for students and staff colleagues as well. We are entering a new phase in the work of EDHE, of EDI. This year, April, we start with phase two, guys and ladies. There's a whole new thing happening here. And our focus is changing. Our focus, the why we do what we do has changed to the point that we, we say we do what we do because we believe that every student and graduate must be equipped for economic participation. That means whichever way. It can be a full-time business, but it can also be other ways of, of having a side hustle, other ways of generating an income in an entrepreneurial, legal, legal entrepreneurial way, right? And uh, we want to see every single student and graduate equipped that way. We want to invite you to follow the Eddie offerings on social media, especially and through your wonderful lecturers who are informed and uh, who know what we do and who might be able to uh, alert you to opportunities. We want to encourage you to take the following steps. We are rolling out an, an EDI membership program with a, quite a number of um, benefits. And the first thing is we will share more on the details of this program at a later stage. But the first thing is we invite you to become an EDI member. We will invite you to find your allies, your, your partners in crime, your, or in not crime, your partners in business, your partners in entrepreneurship on campus, like you have done through STEP. We invite you to, to participate and learn and to make your business visible, but mostly, most exciting here. And Khodiso, you are a role model for us and for UL because we know that student women are underrepresented in student in, in entrepreneurship because not because they are any less competent or capable than men, but because they face more and different barriers to participating in entrepreneurship than their male colleagues. So we are launching an incredibly exciting new initiative called SWEEP. SWEEP stands for nothing with a broom, ladies, nothing with a broom, unless in, if you're me, it's your mode of transport, perhaps, eh? I have those moments, maybe. Yes, but uh, so what we have is SWEEP Student Women Economic Empowerment Program, and SWEEP refers to a fast movement, and that is what we're envisioning, a fast movement of economic activation of young women, student women, graduate women. So step one, we want you to become an EDI member, go to the website, there you see on the right hand side, there's a, there's a tab that you can click on for membership. Please join there. Secondly, find your allies. Now EDI has a, an unfair advantage and that is that everything happens at universities across the country through amazing people like Jimmy and Prof. Prof. Nanwa, Nanwa, Prof. Nanwa, every time I haven't said a name for a while, I've got to practice it again. But you people should not judge me because I think you, you some, sometimes also struggle with the clicks. So communities of practice. These are open bodies, open entities that anyone can participate in. You'll see there are three legs there, three focus areas. One is the economic activation of students, and that should interest you. And there's a specific studentpreneurs community of practice. And then something new, which is great that we're launching this year is we are launching 
a community of practice for entrepreneurial alumni, people who graduate and only then do they realize, who they needed to know about entrepreneurship. They need to figure it out very quickly. And we're there for them as from this year. So then uh, the studentpreneurs community of practice, um, that is under the, the, the administration of Linda Dladla. You can be in contact with him, but I don't want to stop on that. There's great things happening. You no, need to know about these things. Then we want you to participate and learn through SEW. You know, Student Entrepreneurship Week, I believe. It's been happening at your institution and it happened last year virtually. And we're going to go big this year with, with a virtual student entrepreneurship program again. Then every year there's a student entrepreneurs in Darba for people who are already student entrepreneurs. And we invite you to attend that event virtually. It'll be hybrid probably this year. We hope it'll be a hybrid blended event, but we hope that in, in this way, you will be able to participate even if you are not physically present in at the University of Pretoria where we are hosting it this year in August, first week of August. Then we invite you to make your, your business visible nationally, internationally through the entrepreneurship intervarsity. Come on, you built this business now through STEP. You got your hands dirty. You understand so much. Now we invite you to enter your business in the intervarsity that is scheduled to take place it's got to be launched in March uh, and we will just keep social media, uh, keep an eye on social media. We will share dates. You need to enter this on InterVarsity and maybe next year, you are the Chodisa Libya that we celebrate when we talk about STEP. And then now my favorite, 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 favorite big thing that's happening. And that's for any woman. And guys, it's not because you're any less important. It's because, as I said, women face additional and different obstacles to, to participating in business. They will tell you what those are. We are helping with, with that. We're not, there's no special categories for women to, to take part in. We just say we want to ensure that women are equipped to participate as equals in business and not have additional barriers that they need to overcome. Now, uh, and I hope my international colleagues are also paying attention. We really need international support also for this program, Student Women Economic Empowerment Program. We know that women who generate their own income in the face of gender-based violence in our country, ladies, gentlemen, you know how incredibly big a crisis this is. Women who have their own money are less vulnerable. They have more options and they are better positioned to become leaders in society. And we want to be the ones who give student women that support to, to get to a point where they can generate their own income without having to look into the eyes of another person, sometimes at great expense to themselves. You know what I'm talking about. SWEEP is a safety net of transferable and practical skills and opportunities. And it's based on the foundation of your academic studies. And this will ensure that you are participating, uh, that you have options to participate in the economy. It's got a safety net on the one hand of employability and professional skills. And then secondly, it's got a, a safety net of entrepreneurship and economic activation. And thirdly, go back to your grannies now, go back to the Googles and say thank you because what they did all along was right. We had to learn from them. Go ask them to teach you. If you do not know how to work the land, if you do not know how to generate your own food, how to plant your own food, that's a survival skill, guys, ladies, gentlemen. You never know when you need even that skill. We live in uncertain times. You need to have all three of those sets of skills. Go and learn from the elders. And now, colleagues, I invite you, students who have not yet been involved with us, to join Eddie in working towards ensuring that you and all students are participated, to, are equipped to participate in the economy. And that is my bit. Ladies and gentlemen, Program Director, thank you for the opportunity.